Angry Birds Epic is a pretty cool game. Get three birds, kit them out with unique hats, and slam them against random pigs. Now, what if we were to change this formula? Let's say, instead of three birds, what if we use two? Would it still be possible to beat the entire story mode of Angry Birds Epic? Or would we perish throughout the journey? Well, join me, as in this video we're going to put this theory to the test, beating Angry Birds Epic while only using two birds. The rules are self-explanatory. You can only use two birds maximum in battle. There is also the requirement of not using any Mighty Eagles dishes, although that is a common theme for every challenge that I do, so it doesn't really need to be mentioned anyways. If you enjoy my content, make sure to subscribe, but with that being said, let's get started with the challenge. On my journey to get the first egg, we first unlock Red. At the start of the game, Red dons the night hat, although this won't stay like that for long. For the meantime, however, we're stuck with some pretty basic attacks and shields, alongside a stronger single-hit chili ability. After killing a few more enemies in a cave, I ran into a locked Chuck, guarded by a few random pigs. We then exclusively target Chuck's cage until we finally break him free, killing the rest of the enemies in the process. And just like that, we've already unlocked Chuck. Chuck is a magic user, shown by his use of the mage class. As a bird, his lackluster health and bird power makes him weak, but his attacks are pretty useful for waves of enemies, as they tend to hit all enemies rather than singular ones. After duoing Red and Chuck up the plains, we eventually unlock the cauldron. This gives us the ability to craft potions and chili cakes to give us health and boost to our chili meter. Although we only had a very basic banana drink unlocked for now, the cauldron will become far more important later on in the challenge, so unlocking it early on is really nice for us. After a few more battles, we reach the stronghold of the first egg. As a first castle in the game, it doesn't really serve as a major challenge. The first few phases aren't really difficult, only having to use one potion total within the first four phases. However, on the fifth phase we went toe to toe against Prince Porky. Boosted by Whizpig, Prince Porky deals a decent amount of damage, bolstered by the damage cap, a really annoying passive ability against my current roster. Luckily, with the help of Chuck's Rage ability and potions, we could swiftly destroy Prince Porky, obtaining the first egg. Right after clearing the first castle, we encounter a class shop. Unlike my previous challenge, we can actually buy the Guardian Hat and use it for Red. At the same time, we also buy the Lightning Bird class for Chuck, giving both of our birds a completely new set of abilities. Red's Guardian gives a shield to all allies instead of only one ally previously, and its main attack decreases the attack power of enemies, a fair improvement from the knight, and Chuck's Lightning Bird is fairly useful as well later on. A few battles later, we are faced against fighting a Corporal Pig to save Matilda's Garden. Now you see, the Corporal Pig has a broken ability of giving himself a 75% chance to dodge all attacks. In my previous challenge, this battle was pure torture, as beating the level was really all luck whether my attacks would be dodged or not. However, this challenge was different. Since I bought the Lightning Bird, I could fend off against our foe. The Lightning Bird could remove all status effects from enemies, removing the Corporal's dodge chance. After a few turns, I beat the pig, and right after that, I unlocked Matilda. Unlocking Matilda changed my game plan. She is the healer of Angry Birds Epic, being that she could heal herself and other birds. This meant that I didn't have to rely on potions every turn, and it gave me an extremely viable bird for my roster. However, here's the issue. I can only use two birds. Well, that's not too big of an issue, just gotta deselect red from my roster and... Well, would you look at that, you can't deselect birds. Believe me when I say I tried everything to only choose two birds, closing and reopening the app, starting and exiting previous levels, changing the classes of my birds, you name it. Nothing seemed to work, and so I was forced to enter the next level with three birds, ready to fail the challenge. As I went through my turn, I tried to look for any way to get around the restriction the game had placed upon me. That's when I realized, I had a small loophole. The Lightning Bird's secondary ability allows you to command another ally, preventing Chuck from going himself. Thus, if I only used Chuck to command other birds, I would technically only be attacking with two birds, even if I brought three into battle. I knew it wasn't too strong of an argument, and there were flaws in my idea, but it was the best shot I had. Over the next few battles, I continued to only use Chuck's secondary ability to command the other two birds, in a way continuing the challenge onwards. Almost right after, I unlocked Bomb. Bomb is a Berserker, a melee class. He boosts all birds in damaging stats and packs a punch, but doesn't do much more than that. What's really important though is that we can finally deselect birds, allowing us to continue the challenge for the rest of the game normally. After defeating a pirate captain on a sliver of health using Bomb and Matilda, we unlocked the pirate ship. The pirate ship allows us to travel on seas, 
which also unlocks an entirely new section of the map for us to explore. In this new area, we unlocked the Samurai class for Red, which gave us yet another incredibly important class to use. His shield, although lasting for a singular turn, was extremely powerful, allowing us to easily withstand attacks from normally hard-hitting foes. Prince Porky then tried to flex on us with his yellow key, which was the only way to get into the desert area. As all hope was lost, the Blues then popped up in their own boat and stole the yellow keys for themselves. As Porky and his gang tried to converge upon the Blues in a sea battle, the main priority switched to saving the Blues and unlocking the Golden Gate. The Prince Porky's sea battle was honestly really difficult. His feather pigs prevented us from charging our rage chili, and Matilda's healing couldn't outlast Porky's multi-hit attacks. However, thanks to potions, we could slowly regen most of our HP while whittling down Porky's health. And after killing Prince Porky yet again, we unlocked the Blues, the final bird in our roster of Angry Birds epic characters. The Blues used the Tricksters, who removed all status conditions from enemies, similar to the Lightning Bird. Although it may not seem like it, this class was a big key for progressing throughout the challenge. At the same time, we unlocked the Gold Door, which granted us access to the desert section of the game. We were quickly introduced to Undead Pigs, which weren't an issue thanks to Chuck's Rage Chili ability, which was super satisfying to use, I might add. We then proceeded to enter the second castle to retrieve the second egg. We entered the castle with Matilda for healing, alongside Red Samurai, as multi-hit attacks were a nice counter to Porky's damage cap passive. The actual waves themselves weren't too difficult, but the last wave introduced Prince Porky's bombs, which spawned every two turns. They didn't deal much damage for now, and so he still mainly focused on Porky himself, eventually defeating him for the 100th time, obtaining the second egg. On our hunt for the third egg, Wispig himself decided to take matters into his own hands and move his castle to Starfish Reef. To catch up with him, we go up into the forest and are greeted by Flat Stanley. Stanley deals a massive amount of damage while healing from 50% of the damage dealt. Matilda wouldn't be too useful here as her healing wouldn't be enough, so I switched him on for the extra attack power. The main game plan was to make Stanley target Red while dishing out hits from Bomb, while using potions to heal. Although I did get close to dying a couple times, Red's chili ability served well to chip flat Stanley's HP, eventually defeating him and proceeding onwards. Stanley also dropped a pretty large amount of Stanlings, and with our abundance of riches we then decided to go for a little shopping. I bought Matilda's Druid class, which finally gave me a more consistent form of healing for our birds. Not to mention, her thorns attack also allowed us to dish out a little more damage every turn, making our purchase even more worth it. Over the next few battles, we swiftly managed to defeat all the forest pygmies without using any potions, progressing at a pretty rapid pace. That is, until we got to the witch fight. The witch deals a multi-hit every turn, so I switched to Shock's mage class. His shock shield reflects damage back at the enemy during every hit, which is crucial for this fight. Pairing it with Red's knight class alongside spamming potions, we could easily defeat the witch and continue on. Right after, Wizpig decides to block the path to the bamboo forest with one of his signature blue gates. Why try and block a path that leads to an area we don't want to go to? I don't know, but Wispig then decides to spawn in a Howler ghost from a portal. He then retreats back to his castle, leaving us to fight the ghost. The Howler is the first major undead miniboss in the game, and he poses a serious threat to the flock. His secondary ability spawns in more ghosts, which all have the ability to respawn back to full health after two turns of being knocked out. The Blues and Chuck work extremely well for this battle, as Chuck can knock out multiple ghosts at once, while the Blues can dish out major hits to the Howler and neutralize negative effects. Yet again, using potions to heal, we employ this tactic for the next few turns, eventually defeating the foe and moving on. When we finally arrive at Starfish Reef, Wispig decides to pull a funny and then blocks the main entrance to the third castle, preventing us from entering it. We are then forced to go around Starfish Reef to try and get into the stronghold via the other entrance. While making our way through the seas, we also upgrade some of our items to get prepared for the incoming battle, and most importantly get a lot of extra HP from Matilda. Eventually, we do reach the other side of the cove, and Wispig yet again tries to outsmart us by blocking that entrance as well. Luckily for us, Red realizes that Wispig left the first entrance unprotected, and we finally reach Wispig's castle, the stronghold of the third egg. The first two phases of the castle aren't really difficult. We just fight some normal fire and stick pigs, and my birds defeat them all easily. The real challenge starts on the third wave, where we encounter an earth pig and some pygmies. The pygmies weren't too large an issue thanks to the blues, but the main problem stemmed from the earth pig. He had a healing ability that regen the HP of all the pigs simultaneously, meaning I could really only focus on one pig at a time rather than the whole set of enemies. 
Even then, I could slowly wipe out all the pygmies and Earth Pig himself thanks to Chili Cakes and Matilda's Thorns attack. We then fight some Ghost Pigs which are wiped out relatively quickly, only to come face to face with Whiz Pig himself. If you've played Angry Birds Epic farther into the game, you may know how powerful he can get, but luckily for us, he only has one attack we have to keep track of. His Black Storm packs a punch to all of our birds and heals from the damage he deals, but there's a small caveat. Normally, you'd be fighting Whiz Pig with three birds, which gives Whiz Pig three birds worth of healing. However, since we only have two birds, he restores less of his HP on average, which actually means our challenge creates an automatic nerf for him and an advantage for us. We use the blues to remove Whiz Pig's attack buffs and focus most of Matilda's turns on healing. We also use multiple chili cakes every turn to activate the Blue's Rage Chili ability, which stuns Whizpig and gives our team an extra turn to heal up and dish out damage. Surprisingly, this tactic works really well for us, and eventually we are able to finally defeat Whizpig, getting a third egg. Whizpig quickly retreats into the fourth castle in the icy mountains, but in the process drops a blue key, allowing us to keep on his tail. Starting off at the Bamboo Forest, we open the blue gate with the key we obtained from the third castle, introducing us to the ninjas. The ninja subtype of pigs aren't too difficult to handle, although they deal a hefty amount of damage and have the damage cap, just like Prince Porky. They also have the dreaded ability of dodging attacks, although the Samurai's multi-hits alongside Chuck's rage ability work together to counter their statuses. Soon after, we find a trap placed by the pig ninjas. In classic nature, Chuck falls for the bait, and the entire flock is ambushed leaving only Matilda and the Blues as a roster, as the rest of the birds are captured. Funnily enough, this is exactly what I want. I'm doing a challenge with two birds, and the two birds I have remaining are the two best ones I have. So, in an unlucky event for the ninjas, I use my experience with using two birds to wipe out the next two stages with ease, unlocking bombs shortly after. That puts us back up to three birds. Well, not to worry, we just have to deselect bomb and... It actually works. Unlike when we unlocked Matilda, the game actually allows us to enter the next battle with only two birds. We immediately deselect bombs as pirate class is pretty useless against ninjas due to the damage cap, and I had no plan to spend my money on the cannoneer class anyways. After blitzing through some more battles, we unlock Chuck, putting our flock back up to four total birds out of five. On the next battle, we're faced against a shogun pig. We choose Bomb for the fight since his chili ability can damage every pig simultaneously, making our only threat be the shogun himself. Unfortunately, he has a passive ability that gives him a 50% critical hit chance, which eventually does kill Bomb, leaving Matilda as her only bird left. Luckily, the Shogun is already left on a sliver of health, allowing Matilda to deal a final blow, allowing us to continue on. Soon after, Prince Porky arrives to back up the strangling ninjas, and tries to fly away with Red, leaving our flock at a major disadvantage. However, Professor Pig decides to help us out, and tells us how to build our very own airship to rival Porky in the skies. If you don't know, Professor Pig sells potions and upgrades, but airships as well I suppose. However, it requires resources to build the machine itself, and thus we have to battle in these locations to obtain the gears, motors, and other parts. Right after, Professor Pig keeps up on his promise and builds the airship for us, allowing us to catch up with Prince Porky, who is still holding Red up in the same position for some reason, I don't know. We get Red's cage back from Porky's grasp and he retreats to the fourth castle, setting the stage for our next confrontation. With the entire flock back together, we refocus towards getting back the fourth egg. Located in the mountains, the fourth egg is guarded not only by Whizpig, but Prince Porky as well, and thus we have to find a way to beat both of them simultaneously. After fighting in the mountains for a bit, we get to the fourth stronghold in the game, but we do a little preparing beforehand. We buy some potion upgrades and upgrade some shields, but then we're ready to enter the next castle. We enter the battle with Red's Guardian for his shield and damage reduction abilities alongside Matilda's Druid. As the usual pattern goes, the first few floors of the castle really only exist to drain resources. We fight an Ice Shaman who has a really dangerous attack that prevents us from getting any form of healing, but they deal so little damage that it doesn't really matter anyways. After defeating the Ice Pig, we reach the fourth stage, which doesn't do much to give us a fight. It's just a couple of healing and damage bombs and we can proceed. After taking a whopping 50 hole damage from the 4th stage, we reach the final roadblock of the 4th castle. The game faces us against the strongest two enemies in the game so far, my hardest challenge yet. Whizpig returns with a standard attack, but now has a drain life ability that increases his healing by 100%. Prince Porky also keeps his damage cap passive, but now spawns weaker bombs as another passive, which we completely don't focus on throughout the fight. I focus on Prince Porky first, as he has no way to regen his HP and thus is easier to kill. 
This fight was honestly really difficult, as Prince Porky's tit for tat ability made Whispig even stronger, and I had to rely on potions several times to survive from a sliver of health. My game plan was to constantly shield our allies with Red's Guardian Shield, while using his attack alongside Matilda's abilities to sustain our health and dish out damage. Very slowly, we whittled down Prince Porky's health, relying on chili cakes, potions, and every ability we have at our disposal. All the meanwhile, Whizpick keeps on bombarding us with his attacks, slowly destroying our health and distracting us from our main objective. Eventually, we are able to defeat Prince Porky, leaving only Whizpick left. Slur to the third castle, Whizpig has his Black Storm ability, but now he has a version of Chuck Shock Shield, where each successful hit damages our birds by 100 HP. Even with his extra ability, Red's Guardian is able to dispose of him relatively quickly, finally defeating the fourth castle, getting the fourth egg. With another loss, Whizpig and Prince Porky retreat to King Pig's castle with only one egg in their grasp. Prince Porky pulls off his signature clutch jump off the mountain, and both of them meet up with King Pig, leaving the final egg at the top of his castle. With the odds stacked against us, we begin to march forward, one step closer towards being the game. Only the fifth egg remains. <laughs>